Hello, my name is Paul Whitehorn. I am a professional paintless dent repair technician. I'm going to give you all the tools you need to understand professional paintless dent repair pricing right now. <laughs> there are three primary categories that affect price. Obstructions of your dent, the location of your dent, and the size of your dent. Obstructions. Here are a list of the most common obstructions and their percentage costs. Um, one, laminated glass, 10% more. Roll your window halfway down and look at the top of it. Um, if it has three ridges or grooves, you have laminated glass. This is a triple sheeted glass that's very easy to break if any pressure is applied to it. Um, due to the risks involved, we charge slightly more for it. Number two, behind bracing, 15% more. In short, dents behind bracing limits our options, increases our risk, and doubles the repair time. Number three, sound deadening pad, 15% more. Sound deadening pad keeps your vehicle quiet, you know, in the interior. And this padding is a thick concrete, though. Um, it's applied behind the sheet metal. Sometimes we're able to push through it, and other times it must be removed and replaced. Number four, body line dents, 15% more. These lines are the sharp turns in the sheet metal that must be rebuilt and dealt with separately. As a result, we charge slightly more. Creases are 20% more. Creases are in a category of their own. They require a dent to be repaired from at least three separate directions. Number six, aluminum panels. The amount of pressure required to dent them is 50 to 70% more, um, which means they require 50 to 70% more pressure and direct power when repairing them. Um, when adjusting them, they flex and spring back into position with only minor changes. Um, they take twice to three times as uh, long to repair, so we charge more. Um, number seven, triple layer panels. These are zero access panels and often need to be glue pulled from the surface. Again, it costs more time, energy, and resources. Removal and reinstallation of parts may be required to get to your dent. The list on this menu is not exhaustive, but these are the most common. Let's move to locations. The location of a dent is just as important as its size. It helps a tech answer a few vital questions that can significantly impact pricing. Number one, what do I need to take apart in order to reach that dent? Number two, will I have leverage? Number three, do I need to create access? Number four, what type of metal am I dealing with? Steel, aluminum, high string steel, aluminum composite, etc. Can this be done in a customer's driveway or not? Do I need to bring it back to my shop? The areas in red are very difficult to access and may require lots of removal and reinstallation of parts. They also typically have triple layers, sensors, computers, and other vital components that need special attention. Blue indicates difficult areas that may still require some removal and reinstallation, but are more accessible areas. Green areas are better from an access perspective. They indicate lower chance to remove and reinstall parts, good access, which often means lower cost. Fortunately, the green areas are also where you're more likely to get a dent. I have another video that covers all of these panels in great detail, but this one's just to give you a quick snapshot. All right, let's deal with size. The length is defined as the longest portion of a dent. Most dents start at $99 minimum charge for a one inch dent with no obstructions. Here's a more in-depth look at each. Once you get past eight inches, it's $25 for each additional dent. Now, that is a base price. The width of a dent is 10% more per every two inches. The depth of a dent is defined in millimeters and a depth gauge is used to extract these parameters. This is almost never exceeds 10% and is only reserved for very deep dents. You now know the basic obstructions and how your dent's location can potentially affect pricing. You also know how we view the length, width, and depth of your dents and the price for each. I hope this has been helpful. If you're seeing prices lower or higher than this, it should be cause for concern. You're probably not getting a certified technician, which wouldn't matter if you were hiring a lawn guy, but today's vehicles are rolling computers and you want a professional who won't jeopardize the safety of your thirty dollars to $120,000 vehicle to save a few bucks. Be very diligent in choosing the right technician, not just the one who's the cheapest and most available. There may be very good reason why is hundreds of dollars cheaper and available.